Hello, class of 2020. My guess is that right now, you're all saying to yourself, this is not how it was supposed to be. You're supposed to be sitting in the middle of a big bicentennial plot to do things with graduation caps and gowns and throw them in the air and get ready to answer the call of your name and shake hands and receive this paper that symbolizes all the knowledge you have stuffed into your brains over the past four years. I have news for you. There is no supposed to be. There is only what is and what you do with it. So here we are in the middle of a battle with an insidious disease that feels like it is tearing down many of the connections we've relied on to build trust and relationships for so long. Handshakes, face-to-face -face gatherings, shared physical experiences, travel. After all, we are social beings. And yet, we're not entirely disconnected. If anything, creativity and digital connections have prevailed. I am, after all, still taking part in your graduation, just in a new and different way. And this is what it is. This is the situation we are in, for better or for worse. So then, what do we do with it? And the way I see it, you have a choice. You can let this crisis bring you down, or you can seize the opportunity to come out of it set up for better things, not just for yourself, but for everybody. Now clearly, as your commencement speaker, I have a suggestion about which option I think you should pick. I mean, that's my job as a commencement speaker. And I want you to take your extraordinary IQ and all of your EQ and put them together with something I call your DQ. That's your decency quotient. And get ready to lean in hard on becoming the leaders this world needs. So I think I began to understand how much decency matters myself when I was a child watching my father, a retired army general, listen to lower ranking guards and people on the street with as much engagement as he would have interacting with dignitaries and heads of state. Now there is always something we can learn from other people, no matter who they are or where they come from. Decency not only helps us hear them, I think it helps us see how our fates are intertwined. Decency matters. It always has. And it matters now more than ever. Because I think that it will help you plug into other leadership behaviors in ways that actually make a difference. And definitely make a difference in strange times like these. I think there are three qualities all good leaders share. Urgency, curiosity, and competitiveness. But when a person brings their basic human decency to each one of these qualities, you get the difference between a good leader and a great one capable of actually changing things for the better. You get thoughtful urgency. That's quick action informed by a lot of listening. You get focused curiosity a deep desire to understand, guided by purpose. And you get competitive paranoia, an ability to expect the unexpected. How? Because you not only listen to your colleagues and customers, you were driven to understand them. That's how you start to see things coming from miles away. But here's the twist. While decency matters in helping us see and understand everything, it's not going to be enough on its own. You must do. Leonardo da Vinci wrote once about the utter urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. It is clear the world is unprepared for the situation we're all in now. Now maybe that's the fault of a collective failure of imagination. Maybe it's hubris. Maybe it's just bad planning. But you know what? It's certainly hurting us all in ways that are more all-encompassing than any recent crisis we have seen or lived through. If anything, one of the many takeaways from this pandemic should be that our world has become smaller and much more interconnected. What affects one impacts us all. And as Nitish was just saying, bad things happen. They have in the past, and you know they will again. But these are the times we just need to dig deep into our decency and do. 
this too shall pass. The question is, what does our world look like coming out of this? So, do whatever it takes to make sure that whatever comes next is not built on fear, distrust, and entrenched global isolationism, but rather built on creativity, connectivity, and mutual benefit. Because that's how we create long-term gains for everybody, like inclusive growth and ecological sustainability. That's how we're going to be able to set up our children and their children and their children to succeed long into the future. This is not a supposed to be. It's just a possibility. But it's a possibility you have the power and the decency to make real. And I, for one, trust you, and I cannot wait to see what you do next with the outstanding talents you have. Congratulations, class of 2020. Good luck and Godspeed.